Methods. A method is the primary function that a request is meant to invoke in a server. The RFC 3261 defines six methods. In this training, we will concentrate in the methods defined by this RFC. There are other methods defined in their corresponding RFCs. They define advanced scenarios, such as presence, who uses the methods subscribe, notify, and publish, call transfer, who uses notify and refer, and there are other methods covering some specific cases. In summary, we are going to cover here invite for session establishment, buy to end the call, cancel to cancel an unanswered call, ACK to confirm, options to test, and register to register a phone or other SIP device. There are six types of SIP responses. One for provisional replies, two for success, three for redirection, four to cl by client errors, five server errors, and six global errors. The first type is the provisional. Here we have two or three important messages. The first message is the most important, is the 100 try. It is responsible to stop line retransmissions. The server says, hey, I'm handling your request. Please stop retransmitting while I'll take your call. The second one is the 180 ringing. It's the ringing of the phone. This message usually do not have media. So it's just signaling that the phone will ring. And the 183, that is actually not in the, in the slide. 183 is session progress. Session progress is responsible for early, early media. You can play a message even before the answer of the call. There are basically two, two XX messages, 200 OK and 202 accepted. 200 OK for invites and 202 for no invite requests. Redirect. Redirect is used by redirect servers. There are two messages that are actually important here. 301, move it permanently, and 302, move it temporarily. Uh, most of the other messages are used on specific scenarios. The messages starting with four are client messages. There are dozens of different client errors, and it will be cumbersome to list them one by one. In the resources, I have published a list of messages with my comments on how to troubleshoot. You may also see the meaning of these messages in the RFCs. The messages starting with five are server messages. There are a few 5xx messages of great importance. Five, 500 server error, internal server error, is probably one of the most important. Whenever you have a 500 error, it's probably something internal to your server, something like uh, database disconnected, something on the, on the logic of your, of your system. The other message here that it's very popular is the 503 service unavailable. It means congestion. ITSPs usually generate a 503 when you are exceeding their capacity, right? A proxy can fork Fork is like a failover in SIP parlay. So when you receive a 503, you usually fork the call to another server. So you can fail over to another server. Uh, the last type of message are the six XX messages. These are global errors, right? Uh, global errors starting with six XX shouldn't be failed over. That's the idea of the six messages. Do not fail over because it's busy everywhere, or the call was declined, or it does not exist anymore, or not acceptable. So you shouldn't, in theory, uh, fail over a call with 603. SIP has five functions, user location and registration. So the endpoints notify the servers of their current location. Then user availability, this user location is saved in a user location database and the server checks if the user is available and if the registration is expired or not. Then the third function is session setup. Invite responsible is the method responsible to establish a session. Also, we have uh, reinvites or updates or buy for session management. You can manage a session by 
doing a reinvite to change the codec or to add video or to remove video. So you can manage completely the session in the middle. And finally, the fifth function is discovery of user capabilities. In the, in the process of the call setup, uh, SIP allows the negotiation of user capabilities such as uh, codecs, uh, streams, and many parameters such as DTMF in the SIP negotiations. It uses the session description protocol for this purpose. In, in the next sections, we are going to split the next sessions in the user location registration and availability. This will be a session about registration. And in the next session, we are going to talk about session setup, session management, and discovery of user capabilities. It's a session about the call flow. In summary, in this lecture, we have covered the SIP protocol uh, as a whole, as part of the RFC 3261, the components of a SIP network, user agent client, user agent server, the proxy and the gateway. These are the four main components. Obviously, there are some interesting things such as a back-to-back -back user agent, but the back-to-back -back user agent is nothing else than a user agent client directly connected to a user agent server or vice versa. Then we talk a little bit about methods and errors. In this training, we are going to cover the RFC 3261 method, so the main methods. And errors, there are lots of errors. Uh, there's no meaning to start digging one by one. So I have created a list, an Excel list that you can download and then you can check error by error. We can improve this list over, over time. And finally, functions. Basically, there are two, two sets of functions. The registration functions, that it's user registration and user availability. And then the call functions, uh, setup, management, and uh, discovery of user capabilities. This is a purely theoretical <laughs> chapter, but don't worry, we have some labs ahead.